Hello and welcome back to the channel, Amber here, and today we are diving back into the Wheel of Time to talk about all things Randolph Thor in Season 3, and my top 5 picks for what I'm hoping gets touched on. If you're a fan of prophecies, character arcs, and some of the most iconic moments from The Shadow Rising, then this video might just be for you. But before we jump into it, if you're enjoying the channel, don't forget to give this video a like and hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on more Wheel of Time content. Also, fair warning, this episode will contain spoilers from The Shadow Rising, so if you're not caught up, please proceed with caution. So let's jump into it. There are a lot of things I'm really excited to see in terms of Rand's storyline next season, and some I'm just really interested in seeing how they change and adapt. The first thing I'm really curious about has nothing to do with his characterization, it's purely a plot-based narrative, and that is, what event or events will motivate Rand to go to the Aiel Waste? When we're looking at the front end of the season, I think this motivator has a lot of potential. Not because it just pushes the story forward, but because it could front load the season with a lot of action and intrigue. So let's take a look at some options. The first possibility is the Aiel Prophecy. At the end of season two, Avienda, Bane, and Chiad have grouped up with Perrin Ibarra, which makes it likely that Rand will soon have some key interactions with the Aiel. During these encounters, someone will likely explain to him that they believe he is the prophesized chief of chiefs, destined to lead all the Aiel according to the prophecy of Ruidion. This could be an exciting moment, especially because the television show has only lightly touched on prophecy so far, so this could really help flesh things out. Plus, it opens up another question. How will Rand respond? Will he resist or step directly into his destiny? The next option is something that I think could be really exciting, which is a shadow spawn attack similar to what we see in the Shadow Rising in the Stone of Tear. In the books, this puts Rand and his companions in a precarious situation. The attack was led by the Forsaken, so when it becomes known that they are being hunted, this leads Rand to assess his options. Where does he go next? How can he protect himself and his companions? How can he put himself at an advantage? The Aiel Waste is a way to consolidate power. He needs an army. And if he goes to the Waste and fulfills the prophecy, not only does he have an army, but he has the most fearsome warriors in the world of the Wheel of Time. It's a lot of risk, but a lot of reward. And with his back against the wall, it's his best option. Now I like this idea because it's action packed and could start the season out with some fast paced fight scenes, but there's also another element tied to it that I think is worth exploring. It's very possible that we see more from Lanfear this season, and if there is an attack, it's likely that she is the character who explains it to Rand that the Forsaken are after him and he needs to go to the Aiel Waste and take this army, this power, for himself. This would obviously create some tension with Moraine, but I have a feeling there will be other events happening parallel to Rand that will get her on board, like Egwene slipping into Teleronriode and meeting with the Wise Ones, or Avienda being summoned to return. Overall, I think this is a great segment to be excited about because it kicks off Rand's plotline for the season and signals to the viewers that this is going to be a very Rand-centric season. He is the Dragon Reborn, and now he needs to start his journey. It's a new chapter for Rand, and this is a good way to express that. 
So let's move on to the next thing I'm really excited for and really hoping for when it comes to Rand Althor, and that's an emphasis on the complexity of his relationships. I'm sure someone could write a thesis-style paper on this, so I'm going to try and keep it quick and to the point. Rand is a uniting figure. As a Taviran, he's like a spider web pulling people to him and his cause. As his responsibilities grow, so do the responsibilities of his close companions. And when season three starts off, this will be a bittersweet moment of the story. Because just as everyone is brought together in Falm, the group splits up again, and some of them don't see each other for a long time afterwards. So all the interactions Rand has before they set off, are important. How will that conversation look like between him and Egwene when they realize they are on different paths? Will there be a time skip that clues us in on how much time he's spending getting to know Elaine? What about Avienda? What will his relationship with Moraine look like when it's likely Lanfear is still looming about? Frankly, there's not a lot of time to have him interact with all the people who are so tied to a storyline, so it needs to be efficient. When we jump ahead and get to the Aiel Waste, there are a lot of complex relationships happening. How is he welcomed by the Aiel? What will his interactions be like with the Maidens of the Spear? What about the leaders of the different clans? What will things look like when he's met with more antagonistic relationships like Kuladin, Landfear, and other Forsaken? It's going to set up his storyline with a lot of tension and things to overcome, and if we get a fraction of it, it's going to build on the complexities of Rand and how he responds to adversity. It's a great opportunity for the show to really lean into his character building as he steps away from Rand the Sheep Herder to Rand the Dragon Reborn. Moving forward, the next thing I'm really interested in seeing is Rand's struggles with his identity. He has now fulfilled part of the Koreathon cycle prophecy by defeating a Shamael above the Watchers over the waves, bannered across the sky in fire. But where does that leave him mentally after doing this? Will he embrace that he is the Dragon Reborn, the one destined to either save the world or break it? Or will he push back on it? Another key aspect of Rand's identity centers around Luz Theron. This season, I think we will see Luz Theron's voice becoming more prominent in Rand's mind, hinting at a deeper connection between the two. It's a haunting experience for him, and I'm really curious to see how he'll respond to it. At the same time, I'm excited to see how Rafe and his team will bring this to life on screen. There are plenty of fan theories on how this might be portrayed, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. I'm hoping for some type of visual interpretation. And of course, when bringing up Luz Theron, it's only fair to also bring up Rand's madness and the corruption on Sidene. Is he really hearing Luz Theron, or is he just mad? It's a lot for him to grapple with, so I'm really hoping this is the season we start to see it worked into the narrative. Moving on to the fourth thing I'm really excited to see which is Rand gaining mentors. He's not yet a blade master, so it's crucial that we get some training scenes with Lan, and perhaps even with the Aiel. Lan plays a key role in Rand's life, almost like a father figure, as both characters carry immense burdens. I think a lot of fans are hoping to see the relation develop on screen. Beyond Lan, there are others like Elaine and Moraine who, being raised in royal families, can teach Rand about leadership and politics. It's unclear whether Rand will share any screen time with Tom Marilyn this season, 
But if he does, Tom's intrigue and street smarts would be a very welcome addition. Ruark is another important figure as he welcomes Rand into Aiel society and helps him navigate their unique customs and social norms. And of course, we can't forget about Rand's channeling abilities. While they're present, they're still far from what he is truly capable of, which makes the possible introduction of Asmodian as his teacher really exciting. Rand needs to level up in every aspect, leadership, politics, swordsmanship, and channeling. It's a tall order, but I'm really excited to see how much of it the show can explore. Now, the final thing I'm really excited for is a big, climatic payoff for Rand. The Shadow Rising delivers some really major moments for his character, like his journey through Ruidion, where he uncovers the truth about the Aiel's past. He also unravels the mysteries of the Aiel prophecy and emerges marked with the dragons. The acceptance by the Aiel is a huge turning point for Rand because it leads him to a powerful declaration and his intent to unite the Westlands for the last battle. This moment is really monumental. It wraps up his storyline for the season, but leaves us with a cliffhanger. We now know his goal, but the big question is how will he achieve it? It's also a key point where Rand seems to fully accept his destiny as the Dragon Reborn. That acceptance is a massive transformation for his character. And I haven't even mentioned his battle with Asmodian, taking back Ruidion or bringing water to the city. There's also the introduction of the access key for the Choden Call. There's just so much happening in this book. It's a bit nerve-wracking to think about how they'll manage to fit it all into the show, but one thing is clear after last season, and that's the idea that viewers are really hoping for big payoff with his character. The time has come, and season three has to really build on that. But I think if we get a little bit from each of these categories, it should set Rand up on the right path and it would lead to a really great season of television. There are so many plot points from this book that I love, and I know we can't get all of them. So I'm trying to stick more to the themes and concepts. The Shadow Rising audiobook has just over 40 hours, and the TV show will have about eight. So when I think about what I want to see and what I'm excited to see, I think it's more realistic to look at it in terms of relationships and themes rather than every individual plot beat. I'm hoping for a sprinkling of both, but yeah, eight hours, a brisk eight hours. But now I would love to hear from you. What are you most excited to see in Rand's storyline next season? Are there any moments, concepts, or themes I missed or things you're hoping to see adapted? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe so you don't miss out on future Wheel of Time discussions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back next time.